A healthy love life is one of the key ingredients in a loving relationship, isn't it? Well, how would you feel if your other half suddenly or even gradually went off sex? It's much more common than many of us would ever admit. Scientists are now saying that uh, one of the ways to combat it is to keep the lights on as it boosts male hormones. So, first things first, ladies, lights on or lights off? Lights off! <laughs> Seasonal affected disorders, and yes. they're saying that bright lights for men over 40 boost their libido. The yes. trouble is, there's no women over 40 for them to have sex on. Because <laughs> as soon as they put the bright lights on, we've all. Oh, oh, I know. Know. So come on, do lights on or are lights off? Uh, subdued. <laughs> <laughs> subdued. Oh, as, I, I love this email from Malcolm. I think it's like eating your dinner. You like to see what you're having and what some parts of dinner you want first. <laughs> Was. Like, you yeah. like the lights on when you're younger. Now you're older, it's like, just turn the lights off and get under the cover and I've don't got the perfect lighting. I've got one of these lights that, you know, it's got... Uh, it's, a chandelier sounds too posh, but, you know, it's got uh, about six different bulbs. Well, only one's <laughs> working at the moment. <laughs> that is, that's bang on. That's exactly <laughs> the right. A dimmer switch, switch, that's what you need. And it's got a dimmer switch yeah. as like, well. Lights on, lights off. I'm telling you now, lights on, lights off, you ain't getting it, cos I'm too <laughs> tired. We've been through this before, haven't we, really, to be honest? <laughs> No, I'm joking. Um, um, <laughs> She's not. Lights on. <laughs> lights on. Lights on. Lights yeah. on. I go to the gym. If I look like you, well, I, I go to the gym. I just well, think now. this is how I've been working out. Yeah. So you know, might as well lights on. I think it's it's like the dinner thing. You know, it's, it depends on the meal. You know, a little bit of candlelight, and then everything looks a lot a lot nicer. But you know, <laughs> seriously, you know, it, it is really sad when you think that apparently four in ten men don't feel comfortable talking about what they would relate to as intimate health issues. You know, they might talk about my elbows sore or bang my knee and this sort of thing, but when it comes to something that they find a little bit awkward or embarrassing, like your libido dropping over the age of 40, men just don't want to talk about it. Mm. No, my husband would never talk about it. Um, we, like, we, our, our sex life is like normally when we go away for a weekend, that's where we, like, we're away from the house, the kids yeah, ain't yeah. there, there's no stress or anything. But um, Mark's really bad at talking to me about anything like that. Um, if he's got something that he's worried about, he'll go to the doctors himself, he won't don't really tell me about it until afterwards or whatever. He's quite an anxious person as well. Yeah. Um, and I think that comes from, like, over the years, like, uh, quite a few of his friends, like Joe Swash's dad was one of Mark's friends. He was 39 when he died of a heart attack. Um, and also my brother-in-law was 55 when he died of a heart attack. And I think it just it stems from them yeah. sort of things. He worries all the time about his health. OK. Um, and he's been and he's been checked and everything's fine, but still, he still thinks that they've missed something, you know, a lot of the time, and that you have to sort of calm him down and say, yeah. look, you've had every test, everything's fine and that there. Mm. But I just think as you're getting older, that's something that comes to mm. most men. But, but don't you think as well, a lot of like it is in, well. in the media, because it, we're so bombarded with this whole thing that men are constantly after it and women are constantly going, oh, can you just leave me alone? Mm -hmm. And actually, that's not the case. Right. That is not the case at all. You know, we've all at some point or other in our, in our lives, as being in relationships, have experienced it where it's... It's the other way around, and yet I think men are made to feel they're made to feel bad about themselves if they do admit that actually their partner actually wants sex more than more than they do, or they feel like they're failing to be manly or to perform. But I, I also think it's like if you're on the same page, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So you know, marriages go through sort yeah. of you know a bit of a roller coaster, don't they? And as you say, if the kids are around and you or they're stressed or you're stressed. It sort of gets put on the back burner for a bit and then it picks up again. But it's when you've got one partner who's got a much higher libido than the other, that's yeah. where you get the problems. But if you're kind of the same age and in the same place yeah. and having the same stresses and strains in life, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. How's Gary about talking about things? Well, he's quite good. He's quite alpha male in that he will... He, he talks very happily about medical things. I scrolled through his phone the other day to get a number and I, had to, I was scrolling for about four weeks to get past the doctors. <laughs> it's like doctor, 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 doctor for every condition you could ever think of. Um, with him, I've had to work on the emotion. He doesn't like to talk about emotions. Right. Mm. So, and, and me being a bit journalistic, I just, I'm very... I just find... And I just ask, keep asking mm. questions. And so... He's taught me to be a bit more go to the doctors if you've got a problem about something, and I've taught him to talk about his emotions a bit more. Mm. He's a bit of a warrior as well, because didn't he lose his brother? He lost his, his brother and his dad. 
um, when he was young. And yeah, so that for him, every me. every medical thing is something that needs to be checked out immediately. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Steve's very, very good at sort of taking himself to the doctors. But I, to be fair, I'm not very sympathetic anyway. It's like, oh, I've got a sprained ankle. It's like, yeah, OK, go to doctors. <laughs> you know, I'm not a doctor. I can't help you. But Steve is very good. But you know what? I, the reason I don't think I'm sympathetic is because my mum... And, mum, if you're watching, I've told you this a million times, stop moaning about your ailments. She loves it. Every time I phone her, <laughs> she's like, oh, I've got a croaking in, my arthritis is getting bad, my teeth are falling out, I've got grey hair, I've got... <laughs> finish the conversation I feel like I've got that pro those problems yeah and it's just like it's just does my head in and I just think mum go to the doctors and so get I it say sorted to Steve, or be quiet or be quiet yeah. so I say to Steve Steve you've got a problem and it's quick then the doctor can sort it out just go and deal with it because I, I, I don't want another worry he's got mm. moles and he's got this and that and whatever so I'll get on with yeah it. get on with it for more loose women action click here and I'd subscribe if I were you. It's totally free and it means you'll be kept up to date with new videos and exclusive YouTube content.